from the New York Post. McCarthy demands Biden give us his bank statements as impeachment probe looms. Right. Okay, so we can get a, a little worked up, I guess, and be like, oh, look, he's going after as Biden's it, bank statements. But I just want to point out. Why is he only that, asking now for? Well, it's, it's because he's dropping grains of sand every week where it's like, oh, if, if Joe Biden, if we find out that he's a little bit more corrupt than we already know he is, we might actually ask each other whether or not we should ask the government for the authority to ask for bank statements to maybe question an impeachment. The old phrase is boob bait for the bubbas. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah. What is that? McCarthy's it, not going to do kind anything. Of, you know, you kind of, as, as, he, as, as, uh, as Tim was pointing out, you give just a little bit to keep your, your base excited yeah. and motivated, but not do enough. And, and I, have to, I, I largely agree with Democrat critiques of Republican concerns about corruption, that it's a, lot, a lot of it is political. They kind of want to use it to get some votes now and again, keep the other side on, on their heels. Uh, but when it comes to like accountability, they are fearful of it and they don't want to do it. Is and it so and so here, this is uh, the danger here is for McCarthy and Republicans is that they just keep stringing this along. Everyone's going to see this as political. It, what, you know, stop, what, you know, fish or cut bait, guys. We don't need another hearing. We don't need another report. We don't need another email release. Judicial Watch can write reports. I can, I, we release emails. What does Congress do? They can defund. They can re make criminal referrals. They can impeach. McCarthy had any, any guts. What he do right now is he say all these committees investigating, you know, the House Oversight Committee, the Weaponization Committee, Judiciary Committee, the Homeland Security Committee. You're all part of the impeachment inquiry. Okay, and now we're all gearing towards impeachment. We're going to figure out who to impeach uh, from, you know, lower level officials, you know, like like Meyer Orcus all the way up to the president of the United States. Just do it. That sounds glorious. You think that they They're don't They're not going to do any of that. I know, but it still sounds glorious. <laughs> well, they might. They might if someone, it, you know, I tell you, my understanding is House members are getting a lot of pushback on their failure to do what folks like Tom Fitton are suggesting. And so it's not like we're speaking into the wind here. There are many, many Republicans and conservatives in the base of the Republican Party and more than a few honest Democrats want something done about Biden corruption, and they're tired of this, what we're seeing here. Give us the, you know, engaging in performance fighting isn't going to so satisfy, is it, is, you know, we've been through this before time and time again. Is it donor driven? Is that why they don't want to go to the mat on this? That they, they would lose... There must be corporate interests that make them not want to go this route because I don't understand it otherwise. Because like their base would be jumping for joy, they would be yeah. reelected in a landslide. They're so probably they're they probably want to wait. They the want to wait. They they're, want to wait till an election. Well, I, you know, I don't want to say that the, there's no political downside to doing this, and uh, you know, I, I would admit there might be. Yeah, but I mean, do they have a choice? I mean, what? Like, uh, I mean, can you can you not not impeach Biden at this point? Maybe, I don't see how you not do it. Maybe they're looking for like golden evidence before they push forward because no, if no, they no, want no. his bank statements they're looking for connections to Burisma and Hunter and then maybe that'll be they, a they hammer they didn't ask for the bank statements you know they spent the last six months and I think there was some smart activity there in that regard let's like, let's get to, not get to a fight with Hunter and Joe for his bank statements we can get all these other bank statements pretty easily and that's what they did <clears throat> and so now it's now August they're all on vacation and they're talking about well maybe we'll start asking for the Biden, uh, James, you know, Hunter Biden, or I don't know, I'm assuming Joe Biden's bank statements. I mean, I don't know what Joe Biden's bank statements are going to show. My guess is, you know, who's paying his contractor fees up in well, that, Delaware? I mean, no, he didn't, he doesn't pay any bills. No, that's Hunter was paying all the bills. They got to do more than bank statements. Hunter is the bag man. I want everyone to understand that. The money was being funneled through these corrupt business cutouts into Hunter's bank accounts, but then Hunter was responsible for taking care of all of the expenditures for the entire Biden family. That's the whole way they circumvented this, folks. It's like it's pretty obvious at this point if you've paid any attention at all. That's what they did. Biden doesn't ever touch the money. That's how he gets away with it. There's a crisis for the political system here in Washington, D.C., because they've known Biden's been corrupt since he's a senator. He's been in Washington 50 years. This is not a surprise to folks who serve with him and people around him. And the problem the political system has is now half the country believe him to be corrupt, too. So now they don't know what to do about it. Hence McCarthy's confusion about whether to support or not support an impeachment inquiry. And like if they ripped it open and he was super corrupt and then got impeached and had to step down, we'd have Kamala Harris as president. And like, is that are we even better off? 
Is that, you yes. think that's going through people's heads? Yeah. If it's just, if that's, the, you know, if justice results, if that's what justice results in, you know, that's the reality of it. And I mean, just think about it, an impeachment inquiry. I mean, they're not, you know, they're still presuming to 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 say that, well, we don't know if we're going to impeach him or not. I mean, come on, because, guys. Because Here, justice, it's like how, when do you put the brakes on justice? You know, you could rip the rip it open on Kamala Harris's bank records next. You can go into Willie Brown next. You could go into like her old text message. Like, how deep do you want to go to take out every new leader that steps in you because have, of some dumb corruption no, scandal? You actually, but it's not dumb though. I want to be very clear. This is not dumb. If, if you are actually like, there's a really good chance that, Russia doesn't invade if it's not for Biden's relationship with Burisma and the leadership, not to mention the State Department coup, not to mention Victoria Nuland. Like, there's a whole bunch of back history here that, yes, there's minor, seemingly millions of dollars worth of corruption in terms of what they profited. But what does it mean in terms of the outcome for geopolitical dynamics? Like, we could end up in World War III because we were led by a corrupt president during this period. Yeah, because you're telling Russia and China... If you compromise our president, we're going to remove him from office or move to remove him. I mean, Burisma was a Russia-leading country, uh, uh, government um, entity. I mean, what I loved about that 1023, that FBI form that described uh, the head of Burisma's bribe scheme for the Bidens. So the FBI source goes and says, you know, we had the meeting and it was all in Russian. Mm-hmm. So Burisma was, you know, so between Russia uh, giving them money through the oligarch's wife that was further confirmed last week. Who is that? What's the wife's name? Um, Maria, what's her face? It was right? the mayor of Moscow's uh, ex-wife, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So it was like three, and you know, Devin Archer essentially confirmed they sent millions of dollars to their companies, and all of which they shared. Uh, and then Burisma, you have FBI Yelena. evidence. He gave $10 million. They, they gave $10 million to the Bidens. And so if you're Putin, to your point, Clint, it, you're thinking, well, you know, I'm not going to invade Ukraine because Biden's on the tank, and I know he is because right. we compromised him. But certainly, that would be a factor, don't you think? That well, this, the country's not stable. Well, DC, you know, Biden can be con- he's compromised. He can be talked to. You know, he knows we know about him. But we had documents where during the Obama administration, uh, the Ukrainian ambassador was getting an email from her person. Just before Biden went to Ukraine in January of 2021, just mm-hmm. before Trump came in, and uh, the Russians started trolling him, literally trolling him in the newspapers. Well, keep in mind too, because of the Burisma and the, and the and the Obama's ambassador said, you know, was told, well, this is this is the Burisma is the gift that keeps on giving. Yep. So they knew that the Biden issue was compromising our national security wow. vis-a-vis Russia. Well, and and keep in mind too. Hunter Biden was the lead envoy for the U.S. to Ukraine under Barack Obama's administration in 2014. When that coup happens, that's largely a State Department, Victoria Nuland-led uh, fiasco. So, like, this this is a long-running dynamic, and people get caught up on, like, just this one 12-month or 18-month period of history. It's very important that you understand the entire encompassing 20-year period, or better yet, go all the way back to 91 in the USSR, and when the, the wall fell, and then the Go back to Afghanistan, where the yeah. CIA is funding the well, a lot of jihadin to, to ruin well, the Russians quick, from quick within. Sh- my, quick shout-out to my guy, Scott Horton. He's got a new book called Provoke that's coming out in, like, oh, I don't know, sometime. It's amazing. It's an amazing book. That's the whole reason I know about all this history. He's been incredible. On Mike it. Flynn was indicted by the Justice Department, General Flynn, for not registering as a foreign agent because he worked for a Turkish nonprofit, not the Turkish government, a Turkish nonprofit closely linked to the government. Now, there's even more significant and powerful evidence that Joe Biden is an unregistered foreign agent mm. vis-a-vis the Chinese and the Russians. Yep. You know, if, if it's good, enough, if, it, you know, Trump should have done more. It's like when you look at it, it seems so overwhelming and like, what in the hell these pieces? But when you look at it in the future, when you look back on it, it will make perfect sense. Well, here's the problem, too. The reason and I asked him earlier, why are they not pursuing the defunding of all this? Why are they not pursuing this investigation as they should? My opinion is that both sides of the aisle are comparably dirty when it comes to Ukraine in particular. They they were I mean, you have Lindsey have you seen Graham, Chris Christie. Yeah, well, Chris Christie. But he said his audience supports his efforts on his 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 views on Ukraine and thinks we're not doing enough. Yeah, it's 
nonsense. I don't know anybody on the GOP side that actually feels that way. But you have Lindsey Graham, you have uh, you have John McCain that are over in Ukraine in 2018 going next year's the year of offense. I mean, this is a long running thing, man. And it's both sides of the aisle that were like, they were cha-chinging. You got Mitt Romney, you got Nancy Pelosi. They're all making money off this crap. So if, question for you guys, if the United States pivots and is like, you know, we're going to settle this war peacetime. We're giving, we're seeding, we're going to sell Eastern Donbass to the Russians for $350 trillion or whatever the hell. <laughs> it's going to go to the bank. It's going to pay for reconstruction. The Russians will pay for it. The Russians say yes, if that happens. Yes. Will they stop there? Will, will they go for, for Turkey? Will they try and seize Istanbul so that they have a, a trade route into the Mediterranean? Or are we good to go? Did we just appease Hitler for the second time? Or is this actually peace? <laughs> I think it's over at that point. I honestly do. That's my honest opinion. Yeah, I think if 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 the war settles with the Russians keeping a little bit of Ukraine and Crimea, that will probably, you know, there'll be a tense, you know, a tense peace for a decade. And frankly, it depends on the Western leadership. I mean, the Russians are, you know, they will push where they think they can push. And if they don't think they can get anywhere, they won't. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.